cross with the Congratulate the Dean and the Faculty of Apollo Medical College to make this year. Party congratulations to the entire staff for what has been given by the doctor 2014 and 2015. A hearty congratulations to this on this day when you are receiving this so-called MDPS. Four letters, but it means it means four stains from within your heart that you have to bring in to make a difference to people across the world. It's no longer when we all graduates I still recollect over six years ago when I wore that dress. It was such a phenomenal thing. I was all excited saying from tomorrow I'm going to be a doctor. I think it's that excitement helped us to move on, to say, convert that enthusiasm to actual action. It was not easy uh, for, for me, for the next career within India and outside India, and to come back to India and try to start with practicing as a cardiologist. But what made really the, the difference was, at the, at the time when I came back, came back, Dixit was not there, Dr. Gilnath was not here, so there was nobody who would do cardiac surgery. I was only a cardiologist. I sent all the prime ministers, the presidents, and all the important people to Dr. Denton Cooley, who was a great friend of mine, to do for their surgeries. One of those days, I lost a young man, a 38 year old man, who could not who would have had surgery in October, but unfortunately I lost him in December 19, 2079. Do you know why? He left behind a 31-year-old wife, four-year-old daughter, two-year-old son. Absolutely stunned. Do you know why? He couldn't raise $50,000 to go to Houston. That made me think, saying, how many more are going to die? Only can prime ministers and presidents and the rich people can have good health care? Can't we give health care to our people? If people, if doctors in the US or in the West, if they can do what they are doing, can't we do that back home? So that was the resolution which I took in the early 80s. But it was not easy because health was not even considered as a business, leave alone as anything else, leave alone as a nobility. It was not even considered as an ordinary thing. An imported medical equipment cost 370%. No bank could give the loans. I don't know if any banker here or your parents are bankers. You can ask them those days, even if they want to, they can't give a loan to a, to a hospital, to build a hospital. That was the status thanks to whatever I could do. But I really should thank the, the starting from the Prime Minister, the Under Secretary, who really transformed the healthcare to where we are today. And I think we can proudly say today that Indian healthcare is second to none in anywhere in the world. If you, our, our Dean has mentioned very nicely, talked so much about me, but he did not talk about the great work that Indian doctors, Indian, Indian healthcare staff have done. You have seen this during this pandemic, which none of us ever even dreamt of in that pandemic, how India has acted. Our Indian mortality rate is was less than 1%. No other country in the world claimed that. Our rat vaccination program now, prevention program, Again, it's probably the, you know, the, the best ever conducted program. This is the power we had. And this is the power I realized saying that if Indian doctor can do what he can do in, in, the, in America, he can do it back home. And that's what made me think saying we should do an institution of this type. And I'm happy way back in 1983 
and our Honorable President Mary Gales in Jersey laid the foundation for the first hospital. And even at that time he said, he had his surgery, I sent him to Houston for his surgery. He said, oh, hey, I try, but who him and I had? You know, I don't understand much Hindi, but he went on talking to Hindi and comparing to Houston. His speech was supposed to be 10 minutes, he spoke for one hour, 40 minutes, admiring, saying that here in India we have a hospital which could be of great favor. I think that blessing, that good wishes, and that confidence that the entire community had brought us where we are today. Today, over 65% of the patients are being taken care of by the private health care. And the rest of the community too, our Prime Minister has brought plans to make that happen. And we have, we, we, we said it, 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 not only that we have a plan, we have way how we can roll that plan out and we have demonstrated very clearly in our district hospital in Chittur, where it was 300 beds with 30 patients, inpatients and 100 outpatients. Today, it's an 850 bed hospital with a teaching hospital attached. That's our second medical college. That are attached to it, 850 beds, almost 2,000 outpatients a day, and they have everything that any, any other hospital is doing, and they, they manage 380 beds of COVID patients. Every time I call them, congratulations, you know, you know we are managing your COVID patients very well. So nothing we are doing, we are following what all other poor hospitals, Red Book is saying. So I think this is what it is. Your mortality rate of 0.85% in a district hospital. So I think if all district hospitals could be enhanced to that level, we can fulfill that dream saying all Indians should get excellent health care, which will not be available anywhere in the world. It will not be available anywhere in the world, not for any other reason. They probably have the, the, the funds to get it, but you all don't. They're, in most of these countries, there are more elderly people than young people to get trained as doctors. This is why you are going to make a very huge impact. I have a dream. I have a dream saying, number one, since in India we are doing whatever is happening anywhere in the world, we are doing it the same level. If uh, Dr. Dixit does his surgery, his outcomes are the same or the best cardiac center anywhere in the world, namely children training. So not only equal that, we have surpassed children training. Same thing in, in transplant, whether it's a heart transplant or a kidney transplant or a liver transplant or a lung and liver, you know, heart transplant, combined transplant. In all of these, our outcomes are the same or better than the best center. And when I went to Mayo Clinic, Mayo Clinic CEO gave me a, a bunch of flowers and said, Dr. Reddy, this is for you for overtaking us after 21 years. I didn't do it. But Indian doctors, Indian healthcare staff did this. This is what makes me feel proud. This is why I have the 2014 2015 batch students and their parents first. I want to congratulate the parents for having said your son has become a graduate. He is going to make a significant impact in, in the health of people of our country and the countries around the world. And I, I truly mean that word saying countries around the world. You know why? Already 150 countries are coming to hospitals, not just to follow. There are several good hospitals in the country. They are all coming to these hospitals and if only the government of India takes its step saying will we'll promote medical tourism in India, India will become the healthcare destination for the world, global healthcare destination for the world. And who is going to make it? It's not me, not Dr. Dixit, not Dr. Raj, Dr. Raj Secretary, but it is going to be you all who are going to make this difference to, to show that we can give equal or better care than the best places. There are four C's that Indian healthcare is now famous for. First is clinical excellence. In clinical excellence, we are second to none. 
Care and compassion, you can't buy it with a British market at all. Our costs are less than 5% of the international cost. With our outcomes are better than the best centers anywhere in the world. So I think India naturally will move on as a global healthcare destination, but it all depends upon you, all, all of you. So I think that's the first responsibility that we ought to work to them. And I think to Dr. Matai and all the medical, uh, you know, the, the fraternity who are uh, teaching, I want to tell them, India has got the English largest number of young population in the world. Only India can have enough healthcare people. My wish is that we could train minimum additional 1 million people a year. We can use one-fifth of them, 200,000 people to serve our doctors, our nurses, our technologists, our pharmacists, and all of these, so they will serve India. But 800,000 will go outside the country. So that they will not only get an employment here and abroad, but they will send the remittances back to their home. So I think this is the second major objective that we can, we can do. So I have written to the top government saying that if you can take a few steps that uh, are possible, India can become the global healthcare destination. India, India can become the global healthcare provider, service provider in this. And finally, we can make India and the world healthy, happy, and wealthy. So I think all three of them is something each one of you should bear. Say, you have the capacity. Because if, if, if all of this will not come true, if you cannot carry on saying that we can do this, we can do better than what my predecessors have done, uh, done this. this is what they have done. You know, the, uh, as I said, each one of our doctors have done much better than what they were ever been taught in college or hospital. Because they had that power saying, I have to do it and I can do this. And today, we are not just one of the large hospitals in the world, we are probably the best, best in the world because we have touched the largest number of people anywhere in the world. 140 million people's lives have been touched by Apollo alone. So, this is something which makes us feel proud, you know. It is not the riches that makes us feel proud. You have made that big, big difference. You know, you all know the number of things, you call it a miracle, you know, when people have come with acute illness, with absolutely no hope, we have you know, our, our medical teams, the doctors, the nurses, the paramedics, the managers, all of them make, made one team and made, made a huge impact in making a big difference in bringing back, giving life to him, giving happiness to their family. Because it's also important, what you are doing is not an ordinary thing. Dr. Um, Dixit does surgery on a 30-year-old person and gives him back his normal life. First, he has given back happiness to his family. He has given back for his for the GDP of the country. Because these are the person who who is driving the economy of the country. So I wish you all the very best. I can keep on telling you all that I want you to remember is that there is an unlimited power within each one of us. We want to unleash this. You must have an ambition. You must have an ambition beyond yourself. Say, as doctors, uh, as people who are belonging to a section of society which has made a significant impact on the rest of the world can now say we will make India as a global healthcare destination and we will do whatever you know, you know today we are, we are now going to face future health to pass through one unexpected um, COVID-19 crisis but there is another crisis coming in the non-communicable diseases, the diabetes, the heart attacks. Heart attacks, way back in 1974, I told the American author, cardiology, saying Indians get heart attack between 35 and 45, and not 60 and 80 like them. They said Indians don't know the date of birth. I said, don't be foolish. 
They are not going to have to get the data, but they know the, the star under which they are born. Today we know that there is a genetic problem, so we we'll solve all these problems, you know, and then make India a healthy, happy, and a wealthy nation. And for that, you must take a vow, saying, I will do it, I shall do it, I'm happy I'm adopted today, I will make this difference, I'll carry on this task that has been already with way back in 1983. God bless all of you. I love you all. My, my special, special thanks to the faculty who made you all as doctors and my love for your parents for giving you an opportunity to become a doctor. God bless you all. Thank you, sir.